Hello, welcome to Raymond Castile's Basement of Horror. Today we're going to look at this box. Now I know what's in this box. I mean, it's hard to mistake this for some other box. This is the box where I throw my new Topstone masks. When I get a new mask, I stuff it with plastic bags and I toss it in this box. But now it's overflowing. So these are the masks I've bought in the last several months. And I've forgotten what's in here. So I like this mask right here. I don't know what this mask is without looking at it. The one under it, you know, I don't know what these are. So it will be something of a surprise. But first, let me tell you a little bit about Top Stone masks. If you look at this YouTube channel, you'll see a playlist called Tomb of the Top Stones. This is a documentary series that I made oh about a year ago. Uh, there's six, six episodes and there will be a second season with another six episodes that I will start uploading this year, hopefully in just a few weeks, uh, and maybe another six episodes the following year. So if you haven't looked at those, please take a look. It's called Tomb of the Top Stones, and that'll tell you everything you want to know about the Top Stone Mass Company. But briefly, it's a company that made rubber Halloween masks from 1946 through the early 90s. I think it was 1994 that the company went out of business. And they made a lot of iconic masks, particularly uh, in the 50s and 60s. They made masks like the Shock Monster and a very famous gorilla mask and a caveman mask and a female vampire and several masks that have since become classics and, and icons of Halloween and horror culture. You, they, they're not just used for Halloween anymore. You see the images of these masks uh, used as like clip art um, or, or for t-shirts or you name it. They're used everywhere. I just saw Someone online had a picture of what I guess was like a garage sale or some a rummage sale, and they used a Top Stone. I think it was a Shock Monster and the Vampire Girl on the sign, and I've seen things like that uh, a number of places. So they've really become part of the culture. But the the main thing that that Top Stone did was make Halloween masks and I'm very fond of those masks and I collect them. I don't think we're gonna see any classics in this box. I think this is mostly uh, 80s and 90s masks. So these are not the, the iconic masks that, that Topstone made. Later, the, the company made um, a lot more masks, but not the, the classics that, that most collectors are into. But I'll get into some of that. Let's just look at some masks and we'll explain as we go along. Okay, let's see what this is. Aha. Okay. He's a little smushed. I imagine most of these are going to be a little smushed. Let's see. You can see them. Hey, that looks good. So this is a a melted face or a melting man. It's not the incredible melting man from the movie, from the 70s movie. It's not that melting man. And Top Stone made a, a classic mask called the Horrible Melting Man in the 60s. And it's not that melting man. This is an 80s mask. And it's actually basically a ripoff of a mask made by Be Something Studios. Be Something Studios was another mask company that started I believe in the 1970s and they still exist today under the name Zagoni Studios. Zagoni is the name of the founders, the last name. 
uh, but back in the 70s, 80s, 90s, they were B-something studios, and they made a mask that looked almost just like this, but this is the Topstone version, and it's a pretty cool mask, I mean, I like the colors, it's got nice purple colors, and it's a little smushed. I think, uh, I think I have two of these, not sure, I think I do, I think I have two of these. It's hard to keep track, sometimes I don't remember, I just have one or two or three or what. So I guess I will, as I take them out of here, I'll just throw them down here, and they'll be fine there for the time being. Okay, what else we got here? Uh, okay, this will be cool. Alright. Okay. Make sure he's presentable here. Alright. Yeah, I think you can see him, right? Yeah, he looks good. So this is another ripoff. This is a mask that Topstone ripped off of Don Post Studios. Now Don Post is probably the most famous name in rubber masks. They started in the late 30s I believe and they went out of business in 2012. I remember the day they went out of business. Mask collectors uh, they all know that day. It was a dramatic day. The Don Post version is called DK. Letter D, letter K. Two letters. DK. Obviously, it's a play on words. It's decay as if a corpse is decaying. DK. And oh, Stinker is down here. Hello, Stinker. He's exploring. Maybe he'll come back say hello. So the Don Post version was made, I, uh, I want to say the early 80s, what was it, the early 80s, late 70s, early 80s, I'm, so, I'm sure a Don Post expert would know for sure. But one of its claims to fame is that it was used in the movie Halloween 3. It's not one of the main masks in Halloween 3. It's not one of the big three, the skull, the witch, the pumpkin. No, it's not one of those, but it's in the background when they visit Silver Shamrock, the company that makes the Halloween masks in that film, when they visit their headquarters, uh, DK is uh, on display in the background. And Halloween 3 has a lot of fanatical fans, and I'm a, I'm a fan, I'm a fan of Halloween 3. Not, not fanatical, uh, but there are really gung-ho fans of that movie, and they want to collect every mask that was seen in that movie. And all the masks in Halloween 3 are real masks. The only one that was made for the movie was the pumpkin. And even that was released as an actual mask that you could buy. So all the masks you see in the movie are, are real commercial masks that you could buy. And DK was one of those masks. So that, that Don Post mask has really caught on in recent years. But this isn't it. This is a ripoff. This is a fake DK. I mean, it's not a... Oh, uh, it's not a fake mask. I mean, it's a real mask, obviously, and it's, you know, it's sold in stores, but this is made by Topstone. This is the Topstone version. And the Topstone version has gold teeth. The Don Post version did not have gold teeth. I don't know why Topstone gave it gold teeth. So why, so we've had two masks so far, and, and, and both of them were rip-offs of masks made by other companies. Let's see if that pattern continues. I have a feeling that it will. If we're looking at 80s and 90s masks, and I do believe most of the masks in this box are going to be 80s and 90s, not 50s, 60s, 70s. So in that era, Topstone was ripping off a lot of other companies. Let's see what this one is.
Oh, I like this one. There's some good masks in this box. Okay, this is another 80s mask. That is the monster from the movie House. Not the Japanese movie House with all the teenage girls in the haunted house. Not that movie. This is from the American movie House. I don't remember anything about that movie except it had this monster in it. So this is an unauthorized mask based on that monster. So Top Stone made this mask, but it was not licensed. Again, it was a ripoff. They ripped off the design of that monster from the movie. They just they made a mask of that monster without getting any kind of authorization from the studio or the license holders. They, they just say, hey, let's make a mask based on that monster. And even back in the day during their classic era, Top Stone did that a little bit. Like, uh, they made a teenage werewolf mask that was obviously based on the movie. I was a teenage werewolf, but it, it wasn't licensed. Uh, they made a, a Cyclops mask that was obviously based on a particular Ulysses movie. And there's some other examples of that where they made masks that were obviously in, inspired. Oh, there was a mask uh, inspired by the monster from Curse of the Demon, but wasn't licensed, of course. So Top Stone, even back in the day, they took their inspiration from movies without necessarily getting a license. Now, Top Stone did get licenses uh, occasionally. They had a whole series of licensed movie monster masks that, that had uh, like Dr. Fibes and the Outer Limits Sixth, sixth Finger creature and uh, the Incredible Melting Man, and Creep Show's Dead Nate, and the, the, the um, Fluffy from the Crate uh, licensed, and the Gargoyle from the TV, movies Gargoyle, the TV movie Gargoyles. Uh, so Top Stone did a whole series of licensed masks. And other masks they did occasionally were licensed, but this one's not. And several of the movie characters they did were not licensed. So it's a cool mask, that's for sure. But it's not a licensed mask. So it's another example of Top Stone ripping off somebody, another company. In this case, the movie company. So... Let's see if that pattern continues. Let's see what this is. This feels a little squished. This is a werewolf. Ooh. Yeah, he's got a lot of. Uh, he's he's drying out and cracking all over. So he's not going to be around much longer. I've got an. Here he is. That's an 80s werewolf. Just a generic werewolf. As far as I know, it's not based on any other werewolf. Um, now I have a, a, a nice copy of this that, that is not rotting. I have a foamed copy of this. I might have another one that's unfoamed, but I know I've got a foamed one. But this guy is, I don't know, this will... I don't know if this will show up on camera, but he's cracking and turning hard and crispy down there. He's got a lot of cracks, like where the crevices are in his sculpt, there's cracks. So he's not going to be around much longer. Poor guy. I don't know if he was like that when I got him or the 
that happened since then. I don't know. Let's see what else is in here. Sometimes a mask will be in great shape. Some, uh, sometimes a mask will be in great shape and then you'll put it away and then you'll come back to it a few months later and it'll be cracked or hard and it just it just happens. So this is one I would certainly not want to see <laughs> rot. This is this is an 80s female vampire. They made a, a 50s female vampire that was produced in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. But this is an 80s one. The one, the original one was an original design by Keith Ward, who sculpted all the iconic top stone masks in in the 50s, 60s, 70s. But this is an 80s one, and once again, it is based on a mask made by B Something Studios. B Something Studios made a mask very much like that. And this is Topstone's version of it. But this, is, this mask has sort of become something of a classic on its own. The 80s Topstone female vampire, this particular mask, is really gaining popularity and it's becoming a bit of a sought-after mask because it's cool. It looks really cool. I'm sure the Be Something one looks cool as well, but this has its own personality. And I have another one that's foamed. And yeah, it'd be too much trouble to try to get it out here. But I have another one of these that's foamed. And the rubber is turning hard. Like, I think all down here it's hard. Maybe all the white exposed rubber is hard on the foam one. And when it hardens, it discolors a little bit. The one I, the foam, it doesn't look bad, but there's kind of a yellowish look to it where it's turning hard. So this one is, I really didn't, I mean, it's kind of yellowish too down here, but it's not turning hard. So I don't know if I want to foam this. I think it's good to leave one unfoamed and just stuff it with stuff it with uh, plastic bags. So all these things are stuffed. The ones I'm showing you are all stuffed with plastic bags. Stuff it with plastic bags. Keep it out of the light and hope for the best. Okay, this looks good. <clears throat> Take a look at this one. Ah, I like him. Oh, he's tagged. All right, so here's another really cool top stone mask. Ooh, is he turning hard? Or is it just kind of tough? Now he's turning hard. Yeah, I don't want this thing to turn hard. That's the thing, man. They, you know, sometimes they just go. He's, yeah, he's turning. I don't know if he was like that when I got him or not. But here he is. So he's been stuffed with uh, plastic bags. It still gets hard. Hmm. So anyway, this is a, I think he's called a warlock. Yeah, I think he's called a warlock. I, I might have another one of these. I don't remember. But it's, it's also based on B Something Studios. There was a B something studios mask that looked like this, and this is the Topstone version. 
this one has a tag. Whoop. That one has a tag. That's the top stone tag. So I'm going to leave him out. I'm not going to put him back in here. I'm going to leave him out and see if I can massage some of these hard areas and reshape them and see what I can do with this guy. I haven't foamed any masks in a long time, but maybe this summer I need to foam a few. Maybe he should be one of them. don't remember if he had, because he, he's always turning hard right around his lip and right in this area, upper and lower lips, and kind of his chin down under his chin, this area. And his nose is still pliable. His nose is okay. I mean, it looks like it's starting to go, but it's not. It's still okay. So, and that's a lot of them... When they turn hard, it is kind of in that that area, their, their lips and their teeth. That's that's problem area, and also under the chin. I see that a lot. Same same areas will go. Like I saw with that werewolf, it also it was kind of under its chin that was starting to crack. So even though he's a a rip off of a be something studios mask he's still pretty cool as a top stone mask so I don't want him to rot away I'm gonna see what I can do about arresting the deterioration of that mask let's see what this is oh this is cool now, you're not rotting are you No, he's okay. Still soft. That's good. All right. Ears are still soft. Everything's still soft. So there's a, a top stone generic werewolf. And I don't know if this is inspired by a be something mask or not. Could be, but I don't know. It's a, definitely a, a 1980s top stone mask. And they made a lot of werewolves. A lot of different kinds of werewolves. Much more than just <laughs> the ones you've seen here. They made a lot of werewolves. Different styles. A straight thread there. So he's pretty cool. He's still, still in a reasonably good shape. Yeah, everything's still soft, it looks like. But I can already tell that when he starts to go, I can already just spot what areas are going to go hard. It's right, right in these, right around here, the teeth and the edge of the chin and underneath here, those are the areas that when he starts to go, those are the ones that are going to go. I'm looking at the corners of his eyes to see if they're split or if they're just made that way. It looks like they're just made that way, but I don't know. All right. You can't foam all of these. I mean, foaming a mask, if you have someone else do it, it's really expensive. And if you do it yourself, it's really unhealthy. And it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work and it's not healthy. That's the main reason I stopped foaming masks is because I think it was damaging my health. Uh, I think it was damaging my lungs. Uh, even though I was wearing a respirator, that two-part foam, it's, it's not good for you. The, the vapors, I would, I would do it outside with a respirator and it's still, the last few times I tried to do it, I just started coughing and coughing. Uh, and I've got asthma, which I didn't have as a kid, but I developed asthma late in life. And I'm like, where did that come from? How come I, I don't know. So I'm, I'm wondering if the foaming masks had something to do with it. I don't know, but no need to take any chances. But the list of masks I want to foam is, 
is growing and growing. And I feel like I gotta do something. I don't wanna lose these masks. And this is just, this is the tip of the iceberg. I have, I have hundreds of top stone masks. Foamed, I, I probably have 200 foamed top stone masks and at least 100 or 200 not foamed. So I have big Rubbermaid tubs, those giant, giant tubs. Uh, I don't know how many gallons they are, but huge tubs just filled with top stone masks. They're not carefully stuffed like this. They're just, just in there. Um, and then there's these tubs are stacked on top of each other, like two or three high, just filled with top stone masks. Obviously, those are not the most important ones, or else they'd be foamed and on a shelf or something. So, on shelves, I'll, I probably have at least 50 with an eyesight. And I don't know. Between, so I have a closet full of them over there, and I have several shelves over there. And so there's probably about 200 all together, foamed. And then just Rubbermaid tubs, there's at least another 100 or more masks, top stone masks in those tubs. And then I got a tub for, uh, however you pronounce that French company, Césaire. I don't know how to pronounce it. I think it's Césaire. I got a tub for them. And I got a tub for miscellaneous that's got like Bayshore and Ben Cooper. I don't have a lot of Don Post masks. I'm not a Don Post guy. I've got some, and I've got some good ones. And I sold some good ones too. But I don't have a lot. I don't have a big Don Post collection. Okay, so here's here's another top stone mask. So this is a good one. I hope he's not rotting. Come on, get out of there. All right, this is a skull. Uh -huh. Checking to make sure he's not turning hard. Everything's soft and jiggly, just like it should be. All right, here's a skull. This is an 80s top stone skull. I like him a lot, he's cute. And I have another one that's foamed. So I have the same version that's foamed. And I have, oh, another, I think it's like a 70s version that's also foamed, it's a little different. And then I have a, a classic Keith Ward sculpt from the 50s, uh, and that's foamed. So it's the designs from the 50s, the actual copy I own it might be 50s. It, it looks like an older one from the paint, the style of paint. If not, then it's 60s, but it's not li not later than that. But this is 80s, 80s or 90s. So the same basic design started in the 50s, and they just kept revising it and re-sculpting it until it looked like this. And I will be doing a Tomb of the Top Stones video about the skull and the history of the skull mask, and so this or its counterpart will be in that video. I don't know if that'll be this year or next year. So uh, hopefully I, I'm, I wanna do like, you know, like six installments of Tomb of the Top Stones a year. And I've, so I've got six now, I'll do another six, and then another six, and then I will assess the situation and see if I'm through or I should do an, another six. But those things take a lot of work, so it's not, I can't just spit those out. Those take a lot of time and energy to put those together. Let's see what else is in here. This one's kind of scrunched. What's this? Well, 
<laughs> this is just a generic new skin mask. You know, he's not a particular character or anything. And he's got his tag. Just a generic mask. As far as I know, he's not based on Be Something Studios or Don Post or anyone else. Uh, as far as I know, it's just a original Top Stone mask. And the reason is, you know, he's got some cool mirrored glasses there. The reason I bought him is because this tag has a sticker on it that says, Packaging is changing for 1996. Packaging is changing for 1996. The sticker's right there. Okay, first of all, Topstone went out of business before 1996. So this, uh, so in, in 1994, when they went out of business, they would have been making the masks for the 1995 Halloween season. So this would, so they would, they would be making this batch of masks. So they wanted to tell retailers that this packaging was going to be changing for 96, which would be the masks they, they would make in 95. But they never made those masks. So this had to be one of the last masks out the door at Topstone. And it must be some kind of I mean, you wouldn't want to put that out on the floor on a, in a store with that sticker on it. So what is this, like a sales sample? I don't know. I mean, it has a, this green sticker on it. I don't see any information on the green sticker. It's just a green sticker. And then there's a, another white sticker with a number on it, but not a price. So I don't know. Maybe this is some kind of sales sample for retail, because that's a message to retailers, not the public, that the packaging is changing public doesn't care about that. That's something retailers would, would care about. So I think this is one of the last masks they ever made. That's why I bought it. There's something historic about it. It was from the last, it had to be from the last wave of masks that went out the door. So it's both perhaps some kind of retailer's sample or something, or something to take with them to the trade show. I mean, it's, it must be like a trade show thing. It'll be hanging there at the trade show. Like the today we have the Trans World Halloween trade show, which I've gone to a number of years. And I think it, it dates back to the 90s, at least. So it might have been at that show, hanging there. That's where the retailers would have looked at the offerings for that year and possibly you know, placed an order for masks. So that's that's interesting. That that sticker makes it interesting. It, it's first, it's probably some kind of retail sample. Second of all, <clears throat> it's one of the last masks they would have made to, to put that message on it. That means it was made in '96. I mean, uh, it was made in '94 when the company went out of business. I want to stuff him with something so. Where can I put him? We'll put him over here. I want to... He's not stuffed with plastic bags, so I want to stuff him and try to make sure he, he's preserved. Okay, We're getting close to the end here. Okay, so I'm familiar with this mask. I don't know the name of it. It kind of looks like Prune Face from Dick Tracy, but that's not what he is. I love that blue hair. Look at that brilliant blue hair. You know, the blue skin. It's a very simple mask. I mean, it's just a bunch of wrinkles, but he's really cool. And he's soft all over. He's not turning hard anywhere, thank goodness. And I do think, I'm not sure, but I think this is also be something 
inspired mask, I think. I'm not sure. I think this is also a, was originally a something design. Let's get another look. I mean, maybe rushing through him. Take another look at how cool he is. He's neat. Okay. Like I said, I can't I can't foam everything, but and lately I I've deliberately been avoiding foaming, not just for my health, but also uh, when you foam a mask, it absorbs the moisture. And some of these 80s masks, they just don't do well. You foam them, and then they, they, they turn hard, which even the older mask will do that, but when the 80s masks turn hard, they discolor, because the, the latex they used in the 80s and 90s was much lower quality than in the 50s, 60s, 70s. So those older masks, they may also turn hard when you foam them, but they don't discolor. The, the, eight, the older ones, the 80s and 90s masks, though, will turn brown or kind of muddy looking. So they hold their shape when they're foamed, but they discolor. So I've had, I have several that have been foamed, either by me or, or other experts, and 80s masks that they, they've held their shape, but they're brown. And so, I mean, that doesn't look good. So I'm just experimenting. I said, okay, I, I tried the foaming route. Uh, now let's see, just stuffing them with plastic bags and see how that does. Maybe that's better for the later, the, you know, 80s, 90s top stones. Maybe that's a better, uh, <laughs> better method to try to preserve them. I don't know. Because we've already pulled a few out of here that were turning hard, but they may have been hard when they went in. I'm not sure. Okay, so here's the last one. And I don't know what this is. I have no idea what mask this is. Let's see. Okay. Well, he's packed tight <laughs> with plastic bags. Almost like a, some kind of a, like a basketball. <laughs> so, uh, okay, so here's this guy. Yeah, I think he might have a name. I think there might be an ad where he has a name. I'm not sure. But you see him a lot. Of, uh, a lot of people had this one as a kid. And I think I've got two of him. Am I thinking of another one? Well, there's, there's a few that look similar to this. This was a, in the 80s, there were a few top stone masks that had a kind of general, you know, look similar to, to this guy. They did a lot of masks that had this sort of look to it. And I don't know if he's based on any other company's design or if he's just a generic scary Halloween mask by Topstone. But it's very 80s. Like late 80s, early 90s, mid 80s. And he's in good shape. He's not turning hard anywhere. He's stuffed tight with the plastic bags. He almost has like a bounce. Like when I'm handling it, sort of my fingers kind of bounce off him because he's so Pack type, the it's like a like a ball, like you dribble. Okay, so that's that's it for that box. So this box doesn't have any significance. It's not like my royal box of special masks or anything like that. It's just it sits on the floor here, and when I get a new topstone mask that isn't a uh, classic era one that's a later mask. I say, oh, how it's cool. I come down here and I stuff it with plastic bags and I put it in here until it got to the point where this box was overflowing and now I put them somewhere else, wherever I can. I'm uh, out of space. I have no place to put them. So, um, what can I say about Topstone? 
So I have this whole series about Top Stone. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't want to go back over all the history of the company and who Keith Ward is, who Mel Goldberg is. Just on all the, you know, there's a lot of history. And uh, watch Tomb of the Top Stones. Watch that little documentary series that I'm doing, Tomb of the Top Stones, and you will learn all about Top Stone. I'm also, uh, well, I, I have been working on a book about Top Stone since, uh, gosh, at least 2011, if not earlier. So I've been working many years, and when I say working, I don't mean like round the clock working. At, the last few years I haven't been working as much as I, as I had the previous few years. Uh, but I want to write a book about the history of the Topstone Mass Company. And I took a trip to Connecticut to Bethel and Danbury, which is where Topstone was. They had uh, factories in Bethel and Danbury and uh, other parts, other, other locations around that region in Connecticut. They moved over the years, different plants in different places, but always in that region. And I visited all the locations where their factories were. And I talked to people who used to work for Topstone. I took some photos. Uh, it was a good research trip. I went to oh, a couple of city halls and a couple of libraries and looked at old documents and dug up some records. So it was productive. Uh, I feel like I need to make another research trip before I, I feel comfortable proceeding with this book. I need another trip to uh, the Danbury, Bethel area in Connecticut. And so the first trip cost me about $1,500, which I don't know, for me that's a lot of money. So that's why I don't just, hey, 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 just go, eat, you know, whenever I feel like it. It's, it's, a, it's an investment. It's a, it's a chunk of change. Uh, but I, I, I do need to make another trip out there. One thing I didn't like about that area, they have a lot of centipedes. I hate centipedes. I'm like Indiana Jones and snakes. Uh, like, uh, I can imagine myself in a... In a plane with a giant centipede wrapped around me and say, there's a big centipede in the plane, Jacques. Oh, that's just my pet centipede, Reggie. I hate centipedes. I hate them. And in that part of Connecticut, apparently, they have a lot of centipedes. So in my hotel room, I had, if you've seen Squirm, where the worms come out of the shower, it was like that. I mean, I was in a shower. I wouldn't. It wouldn't come out of the head. I don't. I don't think. I don't know where it came up. The big centipede was in the shower and fell out of some. Fell from somewhere. I was crawling around the shower, and then it seemed like every day I was finding another centipede in the hotel room. Ugh. And they were crawling along the carpet and up the wall. They would crawl up the wall about maybe a foot. But they were so heavy they'd fall off. So I, I, I said I want a different hotel room. So they moved me uh, to a higher floor. I thought if I were on a higher floor, maybe, it, maybe the centipedes were on the lower floors. So I went up to a higher floor in the hotel, and they had centipedes there too. Ridiculous. And of course, the hotel staff were, they didn't understand, like, what's, what's wrong with this guy? I mean, <laughs> what's a little centipedes? Big deal. Yeah, huh. And it wasn't a, it wasn't a, a fancy hotel, but it wasn't. Uh, some little dive. I mean, it was a, a, a reasonably good kind of travel hotel. But, uh, ugh. So, when I think about returning to Connecticut, that's one of the things that comes to mind. The centipedes. I don't like centipedes. Why am I so interested in Topstone? I'm not that big on Dom Post. Why am I not? I, shouldn't I be a big Dom Post fan? I mean, as a monster collector and a monster kid, a 
monster fan? Am I not required by law to be a huge Don Post fan? Well, I like Don Post, certainly, but I did not, did not grow up with Don Post masks. Absolutely not. I never owned, in my childhood, I never owned a Don Post mask. In person, I only saw Don Post masks a couple of times at magic shops up on a, a shelf you know, out of my reach. They were, they were up there and I, I recognized all those of those masks in like Famous Monsters ads. Don Post would advertise in Famous Monsters, like photographic ads. Topstone famously advertised in Famous Monsters, but they were illustrations. Don Post advertised with photographs. And so for me, as a kid, a Don Post mask was a photograph in that magazine. As a kid, I knew what a Don Post mask was vaguely, but that's what they were. They were these photos and these ads. I never saw people wearing them except oh, like I saw oh when Star Wars came out I saw people wearing Star Wars masks at special events like special appearances and in a couple of times at the magic stores I saw them up on a shelf and that's it so they just weren't part of my life I didn't see people walking around wearing a Don Post mask. However, I, I did see lots of Topstone masks. I saw plenty of people wearing Topstone masks. I, I owned, as a kid, I owned Topstone masks. I had Topstone masks. Every Halloween, I couldn't wait to go to Ben Franklin or Kmart or Venture and go to the Halloween aisle and there'd be uh, like a bin with, with like wire uh, fencing around it just full of topstone masks kind of like my Rubbermaid tubs full of topstone masks and I just go through them and I just loved <laughs> going through those masks and pulling out different ones and saying, oh, this one's gross, and throwing it back and pulling out different ones. Oh, this one's cool. And I remember all the different varieties they had. And uh, that was top stone to me. It was, it was digging through those masks at the store, pulling out all these weird, ugly faces, these jiggly, ugly faces, and stick your hand in there and see what ugly face you'd pull out and maybe you pull it out you you were almost scared because you didn't know how gross it was going to be you'd pull it out and like ah, and throw it back this is too scary um and a mask i never had as a kid that i always wanted was the graveyard devil which is a skull face with uh, a devil cap and I, I feel like I ought to go get one it'll be in a tomb of the top stone soon so I'm like do I want to spoil that or I better I better get it so you can see what I'm talking about okay I I got the graveyard devil here This is the Graveyard Devil. That is my favorite Topstone mask. And this one's been foamed. Foamed by the top name in foaming masks. A name so prestigious I can't mention it because he doesn't like people mentioning his name. But his, uh, his nickname is Mascahuna. So we'll just call him Mascahuna. The Mascahuna did this. The secret mask foamer. 
This is uh, the Keith Ward version from the 60s. So this is the original sculpt. This isn't a very good copy. It was from a mold that's obviously worn out. You can see the mold had a lot of, a lot of cracks in it. The mask doesn't have cracks, but it has ridges where obviously there were cracks in the plaster mold. And you can see it's lost a lot of detail. So the, the mold was kind of worn out by the time this was made. But uh, still, it's, it's, it's very rare because you don't see the, the early Keith Ward version of this character very often. You see the later one, the 80s one. And I'm not sure which one I saw as a kid. Uh, it's probably this one, probably that one. I think the re-sculpt was probably too old to be paying attention when that came out. But that's my favorite top stone mask. So back in the day, I would always see this every year because they had it every year for like 20 years from the early 60s to the 80s. Uh, well, gosh, almost 30 years, 30 years, from early 60s to 90s probably, they had some version of this mask. And uh, as a kid, I would see it every year and I'd want it, but I never got it. So I wanted it every Halloween, but never got it. So about, I don't know, 10 years ago, a dozen years ago, 10 or 12 years ago, I saw the resculpt version of this on eBay and said, oh, that's that mask I wanted when I was a kid and never got. And I bought it, not because it was Top Stone. I didn't know Top Stone from Schmop Stone. I just knew it was that mask I never got as a kid. And I said, I'm going to get it. This is my opportunity to get that mask I never had as a kid. So I bought it and then I I, I read like on the resculpt down here it says Top Stone. And I said, well, Top Stone, what's that? On, the, on this version it's along the the earlier version it has it on the back. So this, this one says like Top Stone Rubber Mask Company Bethel. The resculpt says Top Stone Industries uh, Danbury, Connecticut. And I say, well, Top Stone, what's that? What is a Top Stone? And I started looking into it and buying other vintage top stone masks. And then I discovered that uh, there were modern recreations of the top stone mask that the, the masters had been found and new molds had been struck from the masters. And people are making these modern, they call them poles because you pour latex into it pull the latex out and you pull, when it cures, you pull the latex out. So they call them a pull. So the people are making modern pulls, these masks. So that's how we got into Top Stone collecting. It was, it was this character. It was this graveyard devil character. And wanting to own something I wanted as a child but never got that got me into collecting top stone that was the the acorn that became the oak it was a childhood memory that uh, was a very important memory my my Halloween's spent looking at the masks in the store and wearing them uh, I had a teenage werewolf mask that I loved, and I wore that all year round. Never took it off. And I also had a bandaged face mask, so it was like white bandages, just rubber white bandages. And then the teenage werewolf mask was all like brown sculpted hair, kind of like that werewolf I showed you before, but an earlier one. And uh, I would put the the teenage werewolf mask on. And then I put the bandage face on over that. And so I'd be like uh, some mad doctor who had been experimenting on himself and turned himself into a monster and didn't want anyone to know. And maybe he had done some kind of surgery and was trying to turn back into a human or whatever. And so he was covering himself up 
with the bandages. And so I'd play with my friends with this bandage mask on. And, and finally, there'd be like a climactic moment where I'd take off the bandaged face mask and then reveal the ugly werewolf mask underneath. And I, I, I would do that also with my toys. Like I had ventriloquist dolls, and I'd put this mask on the ventriloquist dolls, and they'd be a monster now. So I didn't just wear top stone masks for Halloween. I wore them all year. They were, they, were, they were in the toy box. They weren't on a mask stand on a shelf. They were in the toy box with all the other toys. And when I was rummaging through the toy box, what toy am I going to play with today? It was just as likely I might pull out a top stone mask as an action figure or anything else. So they were year-round playthings, not just for Halloween. I think that's important to differentiate that, that it's not a Halloween thing exactly. It is, it is, I mean, I love Halloween. It is a Halloween thing, but it's not just that. It's, it's a toy thing. Top stones, to me, top stone masks, are toys. I think of them as toys. I played with them as toys as a kid. I kept them in the toy box with the rest of my toys. They were toys. They were something to play with. They weren't just for Halloween. And I played with that werewolf mask till it turned into a clump of goo. One day, I just looked in the toy box. It was this white, gooey clump. And that was all that was left of the werewolf mask. Same thing with the bandage face, just a little white clump. Well, that's it for this episode of Raymond Castile's Basement of Horror. Thank you for watching. Tune in again. I'm going to have at least a couple more episodes, and then I'm going to take a break uh, to work on Tomb of the Top Stones and some music related videos. So look forward to maybe two more episodes of Basement of Horror in the short term and then there'll be a little break. But it'll come back. So don't despair. Don't, I don't want you to dis despair out there. Don't feel bad. It'll come back. But you have at least two more episodes to look forward to and then you'll have some Tomb of the Top Stones and uh, some music related videos afterward and then Basement of Horror will come back. Okay, so thanks again. Have a wonderful life. Till we meet again. Bye-bye.